This is the weekend edition of iFiber One News, where we present some of the top stories from this week and your weekend weather forecast. I'm Bethany Jinks. Stay tuned for the weekend edition of iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. One of our top stories this week was about the fifth annual half marathon and family fun run in Moses Lake, benefiting the Boys and Girls Club. Reporter Cameron Probert has the story. Dozens of people ran, jogged, and walked to raise money for the Boys and Girls Club of the Columbia Basin. The club held its fifth annual half marathon and family fun run Saturday morning. People traveled on either a 5 or a 10 kilometer course or went on a 12 mile half marathon. Rochelle Beresford, the club's director of resource development, said the event is a way to celebrate the beginning of spring break for schools in Moses Lake. The event attracted several families to participate in the run. Um, we have a kid zone uh, sponsored by Samaritan Healthcare this year, so that's something a little bit different. Um, and then of course, just things going on uh, as far as here at the track um, for kids and families as well as the races themselves. Roughly 153 people participated in the event. Runners in the five kilometer race travel from Moses Lake High School through the neighboring streets and return to the school. The other courses took their participants further away with groups moving to Potato Hill Road and to Dune Lakes. Absolutely, you can see lots of smiling faces, so that's really exciting. We see some new faces, sometimes we see you know, the same ones, and it's nice when we also have some fresh faces as well. So. The event drew some Big Bend students to participate. A group of Japanese students participating in the agricultural training program ran in the event. One of the runners, Nori Takeda, said he's enjoying the program and wanted to run today. Along with the exchange students, the event attracts some return runners each year. We have some dedicated runners here uh, that come out and they support our organization and of course they're here because they are very good at what they do. Um, it hats off to them. Um, but yes, so we see quite a few familiar faces each year um, and then it's also fun to see some new ones too, giving, the, giving it a go. The event is one of several fundraisers the club holds during the year to support its programs. It's, this is what helps fund our programs and to make sure that we're able to have, uh, you know, the facilities and the supplies and materials and resources that we need to be able to run things day to day at the Boys and Girls Club. So this is very crucial to what we're doing as far as at the club um, and being able to help support it and maintain it and you know reach out to even more families and kids um, and continue to grow. For iFiber One News, this is Cameron Prober reporting. In Quincy, a group of businesses are planning to install major upgrades at Memorial Park, including new walls to honor people who have served in the armed forces. Reporter Joe Utter has the details. New walls to honor Quincy veterans are planned for Veterans Memorial Park in Quincy. Sabi Construction, an in-house construction project for the Sabi Corporation, is leading a volunteer business group to install major improvements at the park, located at the intersection with State Route 28 and 2nd Avenue Southeast. Sabi Data Center's president, John Sabi, said since the park was dedicated in 2007, the names of Quincy area residents who served in the armed forces has filled the current walls to capacity. The plan is to add four new walls to hold the engraved nameplates of local men and women who have served in the past wars and are serving now. Plans call for four 80-inch tall, 12-feet long concrete walls, as well as new lighting, benches, sidewalks, and landscaping for the park. Construction is expected to begin in mid-April and be completed in September for the Quincy Farmer Consumer Awareness Days Festival and Parade. A ceremony is held at the park each year prior to the parade. The project is coordinated with George Washington Post 24 of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, American Legion Post 183, and AMVEST Post 777, all in Quincy. People interested in purging a nameplate to honor a veteran or a service member can contact the Quincy Valley Chamber of Commerce at 509-787-2140. The cost for each nameplate is $80. 
Arrangements can be made with the veterans of foreign wars to help with the cost for families of veterans who cannot afford to pay on their own. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. And now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We will be right back after this. Are you prepared to pay your capital gains? I'm ABC's Chief Business and Economics Correspondent Rebecca Jarvis with today's tax tip. 2014 was a record-breaking year for U.S. stock markets. Investors who cashed in on all the good times will likely be paying taxes on those gains. Kiplinger's Kevin McCormley. The top tax rate on capital gains is 23%. But there are ways around paying the price. H&R Block's Kathy Pickering says if you thought ahead, you sold some of your losers before the year ended. If you had some gains and then you could also sell some stocks at a loss to offset that. That's a great strategy. Gift wrapping your gains may be a better bet, says Tom Wheelwright, founder of CPA firm ProVision. If you give stock, instead of having to pick up the gain and then get a deduction, you don't have to pick up a gain, but get a deduction for the full value of the stock. So you're not picking up gain and getting a deduction. So it, you get a double benefit. With today's tax tip, Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News. Now for your iFiber One News Weather Center forecast. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Ana Cristina Sanchez with your local weather segment brought to you by Barry Motors, one great place to buy and service a car. It was quite a warm day, beautiful, sunny, and dry. We will do have a cold front pushing through that will bring a decrease in temperatures, but the temperatures will remain well above average for this time of year within the next few days. And also, we did break the record high temperature for this time of year today, and we will see some rain in our extended forecast this morning. Low temperatures in the low 50s. The average low for us, uni rate is 36, and we broke that record high temperature set back in 1996. The record high was 79. Today's high temperature for us, uni Freda in the low 80s, and also for you in Moses Lake, the same year, 1996, you broke the record high with 80 degrees, and today, High temperatures in the low 80s this morning for you, right around 42. The average low is 36 degrees, so we did have record-breaking high temperatures all across the northwest. Sunny skies as of now, 80 is the current temperature with winds moving in from the south up to 5 miles per hour. We will remain dry throughout the rest of this evening with mostly clear skies for the rest of the night. A few passing clouds in the area, however, will we'll stay sunny as we go into Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, plenty of sunshine. You will need your sunglasses, and although we will have a de slight decrease in temperatures, they will still remain well above normal for this time of year. Temperatures in the Yakima Valley in the low 80s, so it will be warm and sunny. Seattle high temperatures in the upper 60s, it just depends where you're heading out this weekend. Temperatures will vary in low 80s in the Yakima Valley, 67 for Seattle, Long Beach in the mid 60s, and for the in the Northwest in the low 70s. Beautiful day for Saturday afternoon. Tri-Cities area right around 80. Temperatures for us in the upper 70s, not as warm as today, but still very beautiful and sunny for all of us here within our Columbia Basin. 80 as a high temperature for Royal City, Moses Lake 79, Quincy 77 as a high temperature. And we will remain dry for this weekend with temperatures in the upper 70s, although we will have those winds up to 20, even 25 miles per hour. It will be windy Sunday. Will be the best day, I think, with comfortable temperatures, highs in the mid 70s, and not as breezy. We will begin the next work week with temperatures right around 77, lows close to 50. And on Tuesday, we will have a slight chance of seeing a few showers as the system moves through, dropping those temperatures in the upper 60s. Next Thursday, looks like that would be the day with the best chance of seeing some rain with temperatures by then in the mid 60s. So I really hope you enjoy this weekend, wear your sunglasses. And remember, breezy for tomorrow, Saturday, then nice for Sunday. That was your latest weather. To save some energy, I've used Einstein's mass energy equivalents to design the haptic suits you see in front of you. 
They will maintain our core body temperature while we completely turn off our heat and air conditioning. With the money we save on our Grant PD bill, I'll be expecting that trip to Disneyland this year. You don't need to be a super genius to save energy and money. Visit grantpud.org to learn how. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. And the patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Moses Lake and Wenatchee went at it in Big Nine soccer action Thursday at Lions Field, and it wasn't pretty for the home team. The Chiefs were looking to gain ground in the standings when the top team in the conference came calling. But this one was all Wenatchee as the Panthers blanked Moses Lake 5-0. Wenatchee struck four times in the first half of play. Moses Lake had plenty of opportunities to put points on the board, but just couldn't get the ball in the Panther net. The Chiefs defense stiffened in the second 40 minutes of action, allowing just one goal. Moses Lake owned the majority of possession, but again came up empty as Lady Luck was not on the home team's side at Lions Field. The Chiefs drop to three and three in league play. Moses Lake is back on the pitch Tuesday at home for a match with four and one Sunnyside. Big Ben moved to four and two in East Conference play with a couple of comeback wins over Spokane on Wednesday. The Vikings escaped with a 6-5 win in game one. Spokane took a 5-4 lead going into the bottom of the seventh. Big Ben hung two on the board in the home half of the frame and then held on for the victory. The team got a strong effort from reliever Sam Glowicki and Aiden Lucas and closer Jaime Vela who combined for two innings of shutout ball. The Vikings took the nightcap 7-5. Big Ben trailed 5-2 after four and a half innings were in the books. The Vikings rallied for four runs in the bottom of the fifth to take the lead for good. The big hit came off the bat of Blake Springer who doubled in two. Springer pulled up lame at second and had to leave the ball game. Tyler Winkler tossed five innings of five run ball to pick up the win. The Vikings are back on the diamond Saturday at Treasure Valley for a twin bill with the Chuckers. Well, it took them an extra inning to do it, but the Chiefs got back in the win column at Larson Field on Tuesday. The Chiefs snapped a four-game skid with a 4-3 comeback win over Sunnyside. Goose Eggs dotted the scoreboard the first two innings. The Grizzlies put two on with one out in the top of the third, but only managed to bring one home. Moses Lake got out of a bags full one-out situation in the fifth, giving up a lone run to make it 2 nothing Sunnyside. The Chiefs even the ball game with two runs in the home half of the frame. Moses Lake had a chance to take the lead but left two on in scoring position. The Grizzlies regained the lead 3-2 in the top of the eighth. Felipe Valdivia laid down a perfect squeeze bunt to tie the game. Desmond Ortega's sack fly brought Daniel Ochoa home with the winning run. The Chiefs and Grizzlies go at it in doubleheader action Friday at Sunnyside. There are plenty of high school sporting events going on in and around the base in this weekend. So if you get the chance, get out and root on your favorite team. Players and coaches will appreciate your support. We'll be back after this short break. Whether you're looking for a bigger car to support your growing family, a new truck for your business, or something to pull that toy of yours, we've got you covered at Barry Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Ephrata. Come see us today and learn why your family, friends, and neighbors buy their cars at Barry. 
on Basin Street for more than 35 years, and with locations in Moses Lake and Wenatchee, we are one great place to buy a car. Call or click 754-2411 or barrysaves.com. speed like never before. When you connect to Grant PUD's high-speed network, visit grantpud.org to learn more. Our next story is about a Moses Lake farmer gearing up for the 2016 crop season. He discusses some of the challenges and how a wet winter should make for a good crop. Reporter Devin Higgins has the story. According to data from the 2012 Agricultural Census, nearly 1 million acres of Grant County is used exclusively for agriculture. In 2012, more than 1,500 Grant County farms generated about $1.8 billion worth of produce and livestock sold around the world. With the arrival of a new spring, farmers are hard at work putting down crops and caring for them over the next six months to make sure they're ready for harvest in the fall. Moses Lake's Freya Farms is one of the largest in Grand County with an operation taking up thousands of acres over hundreds of square miles. The farm began putting down their 2016 potato crop this week and manager Travis Meacham talked about the challenges facing it and the many other crops Freya produces. So pretty excited about the weather this year. We've had good winter moisture. So far the spring is looking really good and all that is lining up pretty good. As far as crop-wise and price-wise, aren't quite as excited. Some of the commodity prices aren't up there. Wheat and corn are off. Potatoes aren't quite where we want to be, but we're still going to go out there and grow a good crop and, and see what we can do. So weather-wise, things look great, and, but for some of the, the crops, it's a little concerned. It'll probably take four to five weeks to get all our um, potatoes in the ground. And then after that, we start planting sweet corn and, and moving on to other things. We already got all the wheat planted and in the ground this spring, so looking in good shape there. For most of its history, the land around Moses Lake was considered too bleak and desolate for anyone to live, let alone grow food on any sort of scale. Meacham said the addition of a key element changed all that after the Great Depression and made Grand County a key spot for agricultural production. It's water. That's what changed the whole Columbia Basin. That's what changed Grant County is the irrigation project coming down the Columbia River. Having irrigation on this ground. So this is great ground, but it needs water added to it to be productive. Water has changed this county, this, this area of the world greatly. And I think greatly for the good. We are one of the best agriculture producing areas in all of the world. And we have a great climate, but water is what gives that to us. And we can actually manage our water better than er other areas of the country where they're relying on Mother Nature to supply it. And so the, the irrigation project is, is wonderful for Grant County. Along with water, Meacham said it's vital to the long-term stability of the farm to make sure every acre of land is properly treated to ensure it remains healthy enough to support crops year after year. There's very few farmers, if any, anywhere that don't realize that land is a very important resource for them. We need land to produce food, and that's going to happen for hundreds of thousands of years in the future and the way that we're going to grow that is on the land that we have today and so farmers in general think about that a lot and how they protect the land and how they're going to have the land for their future generations. For Meacham, the fun in his job comes from being part of an industry which is essential to everyone not just in Grand County but everywhere else. So I think the most exciting thing is I'm helping produce something that everybody uses, everybody eats, I mean, that's something that's not going to go away in the future. It's not a fad. You know, things can go up and down, but it's something that everybody deals with and everybody has a familiarity with, with food and, and what they want from it. And I think that's great that I can help produce something that touches everybody's life. In Moses Lake, Devin Higgins for iFiber One News. We'll be right back. You don't have to drive to Seattle for exceptional cancer care. Confluence Health's cancer program delivers world-class care close to home. We have a highly experienced oncology team in a state-of-the-art facility, and we're a member of the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, which gives our patients access to world-renowned therapies developed at Fred Hutchinson, the University of Washington Medicine, and Seattle Children's. Together with the SCCA, we're delivering world-class cancer care close to home.
we are real students. And this really is our college. My dream will change the outcome of my life. My college is allowing me to achieve my dream. My dream is to be a pilot. My dream is to be a nurse. Only you can determine your dream. Big Bend will help you get there. What's your dream? Welcome back. The next story is about an instructor at Big Bend Community College retiring after 43 years with the school. Reporter Devin Higgins has the details. In 1965, Big Bend Community College opened its doors to Japanese students looking to learn new ways to improve agriculture and food production in their island nation. 51 years later, the program is still ongoing with a new generation of students coming to Big Bend for the next nine weeks. Moses Lake farmer Philip McLean spent 43 of those 51 years as an instructor in the Japanese Agricultural Training Program. McLean officially retired earlier this year and said it was a chance opportunity that got him involved with the program in the first place. My wife and I were, were married in 1968 and we came here in the fall and I started teaching at the junior high and I was farming and teaching at the same time and after uh, four years it was kind of like what am I going to do? I got to make up my mind am I going to be a teacher or am I going to go ahead and farm? My vice principal said to me, uh, Mr. Leitsky, why don't you go out to the college? They got a great uh, Japanese agricultural program going out there which I had never ever heard of and he said you should go out there and step in and see maybe it's something that you would love. About 10 years ago, Japanese women were finally able to enter the program and McLean said they brought a whole new dynamic along with them. One of the other things I've noticed with the ladies who brought a lot of enthusiasm into the program and really did, I think, made the program much stronger. They were very serious ladies and uh, so the, the gentlemen, as I will call them, the trainees, uh, they were forced to kind of buck up and say, uh-oh, we got some competition in the classroom. Over the years, McLean was able to go to Japan and see his students work in action. And while he's going to spend more time on his farm than on campus, he said he was grateful for the opportunities and experiences he had in his 43 years. There's so many things that as I look back, I probably should have kept a diary of the many, many different things and experiences. But I have to admit I did it. But uh, just being in the program for that many years, and, and some of my friends would ask me, well, how could you be in a program that long? And I said, you know, it was my choice. And the rewards that I got from that program is the reason I stayed there. The memories that I have of the program, I, I wouldn't even take a million dollars for my experiences, and some were interesting, some were funny, some were a little scary, but overall uh, my life and my family actually for 40 years has been kind of the Japanese program. In Moses Lake, Devin Higgins for iFiber One News. Rounding out this week's news coverage is a story about the annual Beasley Burn mountain bike race in Ephrata that brought racers from across the Northwest to compete. Reporter Cameron Probert has the story. Roughly 150 bicyclists pedaled across trails on Afreda's Beasley Hill on Saturday. The city was the site of the 11th annual Beasley Burn bike race. The race is part of the Fat Tire Revolution series. The series includes races across the state. Jake Medke, an organizer with the race, said it's the first of the season and the best time of the year for riding on the hill. Competitors started the course near Lions Park and traveled along near the canal road as well as a series of paths on the hill. They go up on the hill and go up and down, uh, ends up about an eight mile lap um, with about 700 feet of climbing. Riders came from across the northwest with many of them coming from Western Washington and Spokane. Medke said he was happy with the turnout at the event. For i Fiber One News, this is Cameron Prober reporting. That wraps up our weekend edition. iFiber One News will be back on Monday at 5 p.m. with the latest news from around the Columbia Basin. Thank you for watching.